next joy we have to contend with is the front grill. And you can see right there, straight away, got a nice big rust hole. There's a bit of a bulge happening on this side here, indicating that the same is going on on the other side. So we turn it over and look at the back. We can see behind there, that's what it originally looks like. And this is what it looks like after I've had the cutters in there. And there's three skins. One, two, three that we have to contend with and get them out of the way to be able to get at the rust on both sides. Secondly, we have a big hole here, but we should be able to cut and patch that. And where the paint bubbles, I've had the grinder on it and voila, hmm? the metal seems actually all right. I think this is a salvageable piece. looks this almost looks like a nasty big bog hole <laughs> hidden away in here <laughs> hey look at that nice and shiny this is our preliminary clean of the front grill it's still got a long way to go but it's happening and the good news is is that laminate or bog that we were scraping away did not reveal a big nasty rust hole it isn't hey see nice and shiny at the front it's not good behind but you know so what I do see, however, are these lines here on this panel, and that has the bend on it that supports the bottom of the grill. And it looks like it's been overlaid over top of everything else, which accounts for one of our three skins. Okay, let's focus on this nasty rust hole we've got here. Yeah. Our headlight hole is in pretty good order. There's a bit of rust there, but I think if we treat it and paint it, it's gonna be fine, it's, it's not catastrophic. So that's good news, we dodged a bullet there on both sides. So what I wanna do is I wanna come in just in there like that, and then come over, over top of that rust hole. I don't wanna go over on this side because a lot of the steel there, all of it in fact, is good steel. What you can see is a patch. I think somebody's been into this before. So I'm gonna cut that patch down to there and then I'm going to come across, just above what looks like a rivet, right up to the edge. Good. And that line or junction that we have down the bottom, that's where my bottom panel is going to be cut. And I'm going to follow that along, and then all the way around this bend, as close as I can, and take that panel out. That is the plan. Okay? Let's have a look on the back, and have a look where we are there. All right, so the edge of our patch is just here, and we're gonna come down as such, and it's basically the line runs across there, and then there's that lip of this panel here. Now this panel is almost all good, except for this bottom bit down here. So, what I wanna do there, is we have a bolt hole there, that's in good steel. I wanna take it out just below that. Like such. Straight down and out. Then, of course, our cut down the bottom is going to be in this area here. And from that point on, we'll assess. If we have to make any other adjustments, we'll do so.
I'm quite happy with how that cut turned out. I'm getting better at uh, drawing straight lines and cutting them with a grinder. Yeah, so that's all good steel in there that I can see. Yep, quite pleased. All right, if we go to the other side, we have that little bulge that I mentioned earlier on, and there's almost like a little little dimple there, like a like a like you've squeezed a boil, just a, a little rust hole, and that corresponds on the other side. That big nasty piece of corruption you can see right there. Now I don't think we need to even beat around the bush in regards to this. I think that whole panel should come out regardless of what's behind it because we know the trouble's on its way. I think most of that metal is compromised. I'm not happy with it. You can see where the first skin overlaps that sort of bottom section at about this point here. So I think what I did on the other side is I cut it out, which I think is what I'll do here. And uh, have a look at this. going to do is pretty much what I did on the other side. Cut it out. Well I believe our cutting is done. The worst of it is whoosh, all gone. All right we're going to have to make up some cardboard templates and from there we're going to transfer that onto real steel so we can make up our patches and get them ready to be welded in. In the meantime however I'd like to give this front grille an intensive rust treatment. I have here a metric gallon of a thing called evaporust. I don't know how good it is, but I'd like to do more than just coat the surface of the metal. I'd like to soak it. I want to try and get into those folds as best I can and root out as much of that mischief and rubbish that's still hidden away in there, I'm sure. That is the objective. There'll be uh, many of you looking at this and going, what an ugly thing. And there'll be a few of you who are maybe um, a little more diplomatic might say, well, it's very abstract. I wonder what he's trying to express. Well, we do have method to the madness here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lay our garbage bag in there and then we're gonna fit in our, our front grill. Because um, it's very hard to find a container that's, that's just the right size and we want one that is just the right size to minimize the amount of goop that we're going to use.
our new panels and our front grill has just come out of phase one of its rust treatment. We didn't have enough evapo rust, we ended up giving it a bath in muriatic acid, which has shown that things were a little worse than we first thought around the right hand side headlight, where you can see how nasty and pitted it is just in there on the other side, and there's even a hole right there. Not catastrophic, we should be able to get around that somehow. From this point on, we want to weld in our panels, then we want to continue with the rust treatments, and then we'll put on some primer. Just to make sure it stays nice and flush, we're gonna tack it in from the front. We're gonna turn it over and then we'll try and weld it in from the back. not as clean on the back as I'd like and I'm having trouble so we'll weld it in from the front and then of course uh, we've got a grinder well we've had to stitch this in incrementally slowly so we don't blow any holes in it but we've got good penetration it may not look overly pretty at the moment a little bit gloopy but uh that's what we got the grinder for and i think this will pretty much disappear gotta be careful here some of that metal where the headlights goes has gotten really thin and blowing holes in it With our welding completed, we're gonna resume our acid baths. And then once we're done with those, we give it a good rinse off with water. A final blast with a wire brush. And then we can put on some rust reformer goop. Spread that around liberally. We don't wanna be shy.
Then we fill up a wheelbarrow full of fresh water for a final rinse and a scrub. And then once we dry it off, we can add some body filler with a dab of hardener, and mix it up, spread it about to disguise any of our indiscretions. At this point, we can proceed with painting using our super secret methods. Well, we have here what's very close to being a final product. We still need to install our headlights, our bonnet prop, and our impromptu barbecue grill goes on the front here like such. Well, now that this is almost done, we're gonna to need to consider some problems that are going to arise in the very near future. Well, in the real world, our front grill attaches to the front cross member, like such, mounted on these three points. However, things were a bit different when we got the vehicle. Instead, we had these tabs, three of them, mounted like such with the front grill up the end, being pushed forward a full two inches. Now, way back in episode 14, we were analyzing and repairing this cutout section of the front cross member. And we assumed that it was a modification for the V8 engine that was installed in the vehicle when we got it. So, why did that have to be cut out? Because when you move the front grille forward, something comes with it. I'm not gonna apologize for the state of my workbench. We've all seen it. It's never clean. This sad and sorry thing right here is a series one radiator that pretty much bolts onto the front grille flush like such. Well, actually, that's a bit of a lie. Um, there's these rubber buffers that are in between it. Okay, like that. So as we push the front grille forward, the radiator comes with it, and that's where we run out of room. And that's why we've had to cut the front cross member. Well, not we as in us, someone else. Let's have a look. Slot that in there. Oh, look at that, hey? Lovely. Right, so I've taken this radiator in for a test. It was very expensive, over $100 for him to tell me what was wrong with it. The results were it needed to be recorded, and somewhere in one of these header tanks was a crack that needed to be soldered up. So the total cost of fixing that would have been in excess of $800, US which I felt was a little extreme. And then at what point are you gonna stop throwing money at an item like this? Because if it does have a crack in the header tank, well, how long before another one appears, you know? So, you know, it might be just flogging a dead horse. So I did think about, or I am thinking about, putting in a newer radiator, perhaps from a Series 3. But I don't know if, if they can be fitted to a, uh, a front grille of a Series 1. That's where I needed some counsel. So I contacted my good friends over at Seriously Series and also Steve from Vintage Restorations, all outrageously handsome characters. It's sickening, really. But they both said the same thing. Yes, with some modifications, you can fit a Series 3 into a Series 1. All well and good. Let's have a look. Hey, where did that come from? Hey, I'm like a bloody magician. Now let's, put, let's put it here. Oh, we're gonna see stra straight away that it doesn't sit flush like the other one. It bolts in from the side. So there's an issue straight away. But I can see that we could make some little folding brackets that could wrap around and put in some little rubber buffers and we might be able to get away with it. So let's compare it to the original. Oh, get that bloody thing out of the way. Get that one there, that one there. All right, so height wise, the series one's a little taller, but width wise, the Series 3 is wider. Okay, let's go back over to that truck there and have a bit of a look. Series 3 radiator. And put that in there and oh, too wide. Okay. Oh, we can see right there that if the V8 goes back into the, uh, into the truck then Installing this radiator could be quite problematic. We're just not going to have the space, it looks like. Now, I have let slip before that the V8's not my first choice in motor, and I'm looking for other options, but a year down the track, these options have still not been resolved. So it is, we really do need the engine in the truck, or a engine in the truck, 
to see how much room we have and what and how we're going to install a radiator. So I think in the next episode, we can't run away from it anymore. We're going to have to discuss the beast beneath the bonnet.